Hi folks and welcome to Sparkles for Mental. Today I'm extremely happy to have my friend Andrea Lukacs on the show. Andrea is an NLP trainer, hypnosis coach and a psychological counselor. Welcome Andrea. Welcome everybody. So I'm excited to have you on the show and today we'll talk about how healthy boundaries can help people to sparkle. So tell people a little bit how it came that uh, you love boundaries and healthy boundaries of all kinds. What's your story? Where did you come from and what did you do? So it, it came from the, that point that I didn't uh, knew to set them by myself. Yeah. So I suffered a lot until I uh, had to learn to set them and uh, my life changed and um, therefore I'm standing for healthy boundaries a lot as I observed that um, it also has to do with communication as well and oftentimes uh, we are afraid to say no when we mean it and say yes so we are sending mixed messages out there which causes for confusion and that was also uh, what I didn't understand because um, uh, today I know that people can feel it but they cannot see or understand it in that situation uh, when we are sending out mixed messages so and uh, I believe in the power of clear messages to so that our voice is in tone with our body posture and the set words so Oftentimes, um, you don't know either a person means uh, you should believe to the words they are saying or, or to the feeling they are sending out. So it's, it's quite confusing. And uh, by, by speaking out and being in our power, it, uh, it takes us first to know what we want, where our needs and desires are, and then being strong enough to communicate them clearly. I love that communication is so important now tell us a little bit about your history where did you grow up i mean the listeners probably already noticed that you have a german accent and you're from a german speaking country just like i am originally so where are you what are, where's your german accent from and how where did you grow up and what happened in your life so I was born in Vienna and grew up there and uh, I visit the economic school there and um, uh, when I grew up I, I, I struggled a lot at school because of my red hair at first and uh, then uh, with my teacher in German. Um, each story I wrote, it was not fine. So, and if other teachers wrote my homework, it was not fine as well. So it was quite a hard time where I learned to be very perfect and to set up text, the text is um, uh, very perfect. Uh, so I can pass the, the class. And then I entered the working world in the export. Um, arena and um, I also found out that that people are not so true to themselves and not very happy and it took me a while to figure it out and I began to study the field of psychological counseling and on the way I became an NLP trainer and a hypnosis coach and when I saw then uh, the gap between um, where I was and where I am uh, so the gap was so huge that I decided to to help others and to bring that message out oh I love that and uh, many people love to help others from their own inner being I'm one of them now uh, when you grew up I'm, I'm going back because I want to hear some more detail juicy detail the stories uh, you said in school you were treated quite unfairly because of your red hair so we in the English speaking world would call it you were being bullied right mm. how did that affect you mentally so um 
it it brought me into an ignoring behavior where I was um, taking some space to to people I didn't like uh, or which seemed um, danger, dangerous to me. So that is our dog, in case you wonder, and we'll just switch it on and send him to his dad and then we'll continue. So we will just stop there. How did you feel when the kids were bullying? How did it affect you mentally? How did it affect your mental health? So to survive the pain, I created an avoidant behavior. What does it mean, avoidant behavior? If someone looked like dangerous, uh, I would avoid this person. I would not even uh, um, allow an open communication with this person. So you would put up very rigid boundaries, would you say that? Yes. Um, put a distance between you and others a lot? Yes, sometimes, yes. Yeah, it must feel quite lonely, does it? Um, sometimes. How but, was it with your parents? Our... Were they open or were they mean to, or did they understand what you were going through? Yes, and they were supporting me and telling me that uh, when I will be uh, older, I would love my hair. And uh, they supported me that way. But um, for me, it was anyway very hard because I couldn't believe the words they were telling me um, at that moment because mm. I was experiencing something different. Yeah, school kids can be really mean and bullying can affect the, the future of somebody very, 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 very much. Now, how come that after you finished school, you went into economy? So as I didn't know, either I want to study economics or psychology or uh, law, um, I decided that economy would be the best thing for me. Okay. <laughs> yes. So then you decided to study economy of all things. If it's a male dominated field, how did that, did that work out for a woman and a woman that was bullied in school and maybe the self-esteem was a little lower than optimal? Uh, so I loved marketing and I did very well in here and um, it was a great pleasure going this way and um, then I decided to to go into the important export where I could use my languages which I loved very much and um, so um, I could use English as well uh, on the way and it was a pleasure working with people around the world. All righty, Andrea, that now you were busy doing marketing and uh, economics for a business, I thought, for the corp for corporate world, for big business or small business. What did you do? No, I was in the export and import. So, okay. yes, um, it was a marketing and international business. And then I found uh, international business interesting because I wanted to improve my uh, languages and uh, I decided then to to um, also use French but as it was uh, then uh, not in my reality I I am very bad at it uh, today. <laughs> French is hard for German speakers sometimes I, I studied French in school and it was interesting. <laughs> now uh, you worked certainly for a big corporation in Imen Export. So why did you stop doing this kind of work and decide to do the coaching business and the coaching work that you do today? Yes, as my experience showed that I attracted such people in my workspace as well. And it burned me out and I had mm -hmm. to set... Um, uh, a new direction to learn from it and um, tell me about it how did that how did you attract people in your workspace that were basically bullying you if I understand it right 
Yeah, so if you are in such a victim mode, you oftentimes attract people so you can become aware of uh, where you are and that you're not setting your boundaries. But uh, as if you are not realizing it at immediately as I was and you are pleasing even them, so it, it expands until it gets to an amount where you cannot handle it anymore. Yeah, so I, I love that the way you said it, you were trying to please everybody and probably working 24 seven to try to get things right. So people would be pleased. And then you had people that were abusing them and they were never pleased how much you try. And that yeah. would burn the best person out. Did that happen? Yes. Yeah. Sounds like really hard. Yes, it was a really hard time and really hard several years and it was like um, jumping in in uh, in a circle not going out mm, like being trapped and running and running around and around did you have a family like a partner kids yes i did have them as well and i was for them here as well so and um the overwhelm got uh, harder and harder with the time. So you were not only working and trying to please them, but also trying to please your husband and trying to please your children. And that is way too much for any human being. So you discovered boundaries. How did that work? How, why did you get into that? And how did you first start setting boundaries and what happened? Yes, so first of all, um, the confusion was so hard that I didn't even know what my really wants and desires are. So I worked upon my values to become clear of what it is that I really want. So for me personally, it was even hard to know what I want. If you would ask me what I don't want, I could list 100 things immediately. But if you ask me, what do you want? Uh, I was uh, not able to answer that question. But it's interesting because I see that a lot in my depressed client. Were you clinically depressed at that point? So um, as I don't know, right? I don't oh, know. Yeah. So you knew what you didn't want. You didn't want that situation anymore, but you weren't clear about what you wanted. What did it take for you to make the decision to change in the first place? So, so the pain needed to become very strong. So I could not uh, go any further as I was doing. Mm -hmm. And by becoming clear of that, uh, I knew I have to do something. And so I began to study psychological counseling to get an understanding of uh, how everything runs and um to get a, a clarity about what happened because this was very unclear to me and um then the first step was to become clear of what it is and uh, it was quite easy because if you know what you don't want uh, the opposite might be that what you want right <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you don't want to be unhappy and being abused but maybe you don't want to abuse people, but you at least want to stand your ground, right? Yes. So that's what we call boundaries. How did you develop or learn about boundaries and then actually start to enforce them, which usually leads to conflict? Yes. Uh, first, uh, the first step was what observation. Not observation of others, but of myself on how I was feeling in a situation, what were my thoughts to it? How were my feelings? How were, uh, was I um, a feeling in a situation? How uh, would I tend to behave or act or to pay um, attention to the little voice in my head, what it was uh, saying to me? And by doing that, um, uh, for me, it became easier not just to think about it and reflect in my mind, but to write it down. Mm -hmm. So I could have a look on some weeks later as well to see the development of my thoughts changed. So you started to journal and study psychological counseling and slowly over time, you noticed your thoughts changed. 
in what way did they change? Yes, so that I'm worthy and I'm good enough. And not even then, I was uh, contributing much more than even others, which uh, what I was not realizing then, but but uh, in comparison afterwards. So, and uh, I learned to to set myself a toolbox uh, with uh, all the positive reference experiences I had uh, in my whole life. So I could recall them back. And um, uh, so it's like a little toolbox we can use when we are in a down phase to empower ourselves to, to bring up in our minds all these nice uh, uh, reference experiences we already had, what we already mastered and did, because oftentimes we don't even realize what we already accomplished. And, and uh, the next step was to set priorities for my day. Mm -hmm. So I planned my day. And uh, by prioritizing it, I, I find out that uh, some self-care time for me has some space in the calendar as well. And I allowed it to myself and then I stick to the plan. And what I observed is that in the little time which I planned for one duty, uh, I was uh, uh, focused because I didn't have to think of what's going to be next because I had it already on my calendar. And I was committed to do one thing uh, after uh, the next. Um, or one thing at a time. And um, here I saw the power of, of, of um, productivity. And uh, it, it helped me also in boundary setting of time boundary setting, because if there were no lines anymore in the calendar, I couldn't write it down. So I had to say no, although uh, otherwise I would say maybe yes, uh, I can do everything. <laughs> Um, and uh, that way it helped me and uh, it helped me also to communicate it easier because uh, I was committed to the plan and if there is no space I, I cannot write it so I have to say no and uh, not feeling uh, some guilty or judging myself because I was celebrating every success because each line I performed I, I gave myself a high five and uh, congratulated myself for, for doing so. That is a very important point, I think. Um, you avoided feeling guilty by celebrating every success and yeah. saying you are worth it. You are so worth it, right? Yeah. It is worth caring for yourself because you are a good person. Yes, and and I like for me to compare it with uh, for myself with money. I said if I don't have any money, I cannot give it uh, others, and if I don't have the power or or if I'm not happy, I cannot share it with my family as well. So I saw the importance in in um, uh, self care as well. So I deserve it. In my young years, maybe I will put myself on the last place, but, but then I discovered what changes if you put yourself on the first place. Right. So it's, it's not uh, of being uh, arrogant. So um, it's uh, rather you have more to share with, uh, with family, friends or, or whomever. I really like that analogy. And in the English room, we often speak of the half full or full glass. And I think unless your glass is full of self-care and to the overflow, you can't give to others because you don't have it to give. And that is exactly what you say, and it's so true. Now, tell me, when you started setting boundaries, how did the people around you react to that? So as I was in a very down phase, so I had to communicate that I don't feel well, um, so which was not easy for me, but, uh, but uh, I just communicated it. And uh, for in my case, I had um, patients uh, which I got back, so they assisted me even, so uh, it was no hard way doing so. So and, I, and then I asked myself, so and what was so hard not to doing that before right 
Yeah, often what we find is when we start to set boundaries that sometimes people say, but you always did that. How do you react to somebody coming at you and by saying, you don't want to do that today, but you always did that. Yes, but uh, but um, to do to have to be in my power and to help more, I need to fill my batteries uh, uh, also one time uh, when when they are low. So and uh, I will explain that everything in nature comes in circles. So like uh, our. Uh, spring uh, winter time uh, has something different to go with the homeostasis in life so it is with uh, with us as well and if we uh, need to recharge ourselves so we are welcome to do so so did you find that your children understood that as well or did you con have some resistance from them no i had no resistance they res uh, assisted me doing so and uh, I even teach them to, to, to do the same for themselves uh, when the time is right uh, so um, they can uh, give it to the, uh, their friends as well so and it uh, also has something to do with respect because uh, we, we want to respect the, the boundaries of others but we want to, to demand them for ourselves as well and without feeling guilty or i love that it's so ourselves. important that we teach our children to respect their boundaries but also other people's boundaries because that's the intersection where we communicate very yes. very very fascinating so now you are teaching clients uh when you are teaching or coaching clients coaching of course is different from teaching uh, how do you help them develop healthier boundaries? So um, we have a look on where, on where they are and uh, what is uh, uh, missing on resources. So we practice them and until they become a habit and they can uh, do it then easier. Mm -hmm. Do you have any preferred tools or books that you recommend if people are interested in developing boundaries or getting boundaries? I personally love NLP, so I can recommend these tools. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody wants to study NLP. Are there other books that you really love or? So I love the books from Tony Robbins as they are easy to read um, and they have some useful uh, uh, clues on the way. Uh, so we can learn um, by a book as well to set our boundaries. Okay. Do you have any specific book that really made an impact in your life? So I read a lot of books and I cannot say it was this one. Um, but um, I believe that with books, it is uh, that we will come into a shop and we will be attracted to a certain book and uh, we will pick this one and that's a book we are meant to look at and read i totally agree and uh, sometimes it's a, the, the famous question if you were on an island and you could only take one book which one would it be <laughs> i mean i know <laughs> <laughs> I will take the book, uh, Unleash the Power from Tony Robbins. I believe it is uh, titled that way. Yeah, that's a beautiful book. Thank you. I knew I could nail you. <laughs> <laughs> Any specific tools besides NLP that you really like to use with your clients or that you recommend your clients use with themselves to change habits and improve them? Yes, to, to, to start with little things and to practice them at home. So how will it look like? So I like it in a future-based form. So to see um, what does, uh, will it be if such a situation will be in future, uh, where I'm, am I today? How will I act today? How, how uh, is my desired uh, uh, behavior in future? And uh, then seeing which resources could help me or 
how could I post my body posture? Because I believe that the body posture also impacts uh, our behavior a little bit. So, and by paying attention on the emotions, how would I feel then? How would I act and seeing myself doing so? Um, and um, to jump into this uh, new future and seeing, uh, feeling and hearing what I would hear then. And uh, then starting with little things to get them into practice. Mm, I like that. So basically at first they practice in their mind and how do they actually go out in the world and practice with real people? But most people that are people pleaser and have no boundaries are scared of because they know somebody might get angry. And that's a common feature. And, and that people with no boundaries and people pleaser are afraid of conflict and that others might get angry at them. Yeah, so I would recommend searching one uh, game partner um, and treating it like a little game. So, and uh, by doing this game, each partner will uh, say for uh, five minutes in uh, several tonations, yes and no. No more uh, needs to be done, just to say yes and no in different tonations with different body postures and having a look on how it feels for me while I'm doing it. So, and then the other uh, person, is doing the same or or we could do it uh, that way i will say yes you will say no and in different tonations we are playing uh, like uh, with a ball we hit it one to another and then we will turn the game around and we will use the second word we hadn't before and we'll practice five minutes that way and what it helps us is uh, when we come in a situation, we can recall all of these um, memories back and uh, we have a big variety of um, how we expressed yes or no already. And the fine thing with our brain is that if we did it this way, we can recall it whenever we want. I it's like a resource. Okay, sorry. It's yes, a it's, it's, it's a great resource, I believe. I like that. I really do. It's kind of having a game partner or even doing role play in little situation that you are scared of that can be very, very helpful to get you to practice actually being assertive. I yes. sometimes do that with my clients. You probably do the same thing. We practice a situation that would con entail a conflict. Yes. And, and the key to success here is practice, practice, practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> and you stay imperfect in your perfect practice. I love that word play sometimes. I love that. So how are you now helping your clients? Or how? Uh, what, what, what would be the ideal person to contact you? And how can they get in touch with you? Yes, uh, everyone who... who um, lacks in clarity or suffers from guilt, shame, fear, um, all these negative emotions, um, everyone who has disconnected from their emotions on the way, um, and um, the ones who want to learn to go the next step. I love that. So where can they find you? What's the best way to contact you, Andrea? Yes, the best way to contact me is via the email andrealukac.coaching at gmail.com. All righty, I'll sure to share that on the podcast notes. And uh, in one sentence, what would you summarize is the most important thing for anybody to know about healthy boundaries? How can they start sparkling? Yes, become your best observer. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you, Andrea, and all the best for you and your coaching practice. Take care. Bye-bye.